Hey everybody, this is Mr. Munson with Unit 11, solids, three-dimensional shapes. Um, we're almost done. We're looking at 11.3 area and volume with similar solids. Very easy lesson, very simple stuff, very intuitive if you're paying attention. Let's get started. All right, let's take a look at these two solids. Um, I want to start talking about these solids in the sense of looking at ratios, special ratios that we find with similar solids, um, such as the side length, the scale factor, the ratio between the perimeters, the ratio between the area, the ratio between the volumes, okay? Before we do that, we want to confirm that our two shapes are similar to begin with. If you remember back when we did our unit on similarity, uh, for shapes to be similar, their sides have to be proportional. In other words, if I write a ratio between any two corresponding sides, that ratio, that fraction must equal that the uh, fractions in the other sides okay now they might not at first look the same but they are the same because you can reduce them to decimal or just reduce the uh, reduce the fractions they should come down and look the same if they don't the shapes are not similar put me on pause let's have you go check to see if these shapes are similar all right so i went ahead and wrote a ratio between the corresponding sides and i know the height of the pyramids those are corresponding um, when it came to the two sides that wrap the 90 degrees i didn't just say the six goes with the eight in this in the right hand because of they're both sitting on the left hand side i did the six with the eight and the eight with the 12 because the six is the smaller of the two on the left so it has to match with the eight on the other side that's my thought process on it i'm not gonna fall for any tricks all right so I now definitely could have reduced these fractions to look at them, but I turned them into decimals instead. That's just my prerogative. What I find is that this one is different than the other ones. That means these two shapes are not similar. So there's no need for us to even consider writing down a scale factor, a perimeter ratio, all the things that we're getting ready to do. There's some, the shapes have to be similar. All right, let's take a look at these two cones. Okay, let's go ahead and have you check to see if these are similar. Put me on pause, come back and check your work. Cool. They definitely um, reduced down to be the same number, so that means these two shapes are similar. I related my radiuses together and my heights together to confirm that these two shapes are similar. So the side length ratio and the scale factor ratio are exactly the same thing. You find them by writing a ratio, a fraction, between the two things. From now on, from this point on, I always want you to write the image over the pre-image. So I'm just going to simply declare because it's my problem. I'm going to declare this one over here on the left as my pre-image, my initial image, and then my A prime to be my image, the copy. Okay? All right, so whenever you're writing your ratios, I always want you to write the image over the pre-image. Go ahead and write the side length and the scale factor ratios. All you got to do is find a pair of sides and write a ratio in the way I just told you to do it. All right, there you have it, 25 sixteenths. Let's go ahead and reduce I have no idea where the 16 came from. How about 15? And that reduces down to 5 thirds. Okay? So 5 thirds ends up being our side length ratio. Whoops. Right in green here. 5 thirds is our side length ratio, right? It's going to be the same. If I had chose 60 over 36, over 36, it would have turned out to be 5 thirds. Well, what we know is that the side length and scale factor are found the same way. We find the scale factor by simply writing a ratio between any two corresponding sides. That's something that we did before. You can go and search in Google, whatever you need to do. So now keep in mind when we were doing this, um, let's say this was in feet, okay? The units of measurement was in feet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the perimeter ratios. Remember, I'm gonna put the pre-image or the image on top and the pre-image on the bottom. So when we're talking about the, the perimeter, we're going to be talking about really the circumference. So go and calculate the circumference for both those circles and then come back and check your work. All right, there you have it. The two um, circumferences, the perimeters of the circle, 50 pi and 30 pi. Now, since this is in feet, these will be in feet as well. Right? We're not talking about area here. These are distance measurements, and we're not all of a sudden turning into feet squared. So let's look at that. Okay, cool. So we got 50 feet over 30 feet. Um, we can certainly reduce that. And guess what? Five thirds comes flat out again. Okay, this is actually very predictable. This is not just by accident. Hey, the scale factor was a ratio between two um, corresponding side lengths, which had units of feet. And so when we got to perimeter, 
really the units are still the same they're feet so what ends up happening is that um, the scale factor for the perimeter which in this case turned out to be five thirds is the same I need you to understand this very important fact the perimeter ratio the scale factor the side length all the same ratios so if I give you one you know those other ones okay I'm going kind of fast, so if that you got lost in that, you just simply rewind it and go back and look at it. Let's take a look at the area. All right, so now I could certainly look at the lateral areas of these two cones. That would be the parts that make the cones, um, and I could find out what those numbers are and then write a ratio between them. And what I'm here to tell you is that ratio, the sides of the cones, the lateral area, the part that comes up to the point, if I found the area of those things, the number of squares it takes to cover both those things, and I wrote a ratio with the image over the pre-image, that number, once reduced, would be exactly the same number as the area ratios of the circles. So I'm going to go and find the circle areas, write a ratio between them, and that represents the area ratios for these two figures. Okay? So the surface area ratio that includes all the sides would reduce down to this particular number. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and put me on pause and find the area of both those circles and write your ratios. All right. Did you get it right? Now remember we're finding area. So this is now going to be in feet squared. Okay. All right. Let's put those numbers over uh, next to their area ratio. Let's go ahead and do some reducing. I'm going to let my calculator do this. And uh, if my calculator did it right, it came out to 25 ninths. And remember, these are in feet squared. We really, when we're talking about this ratio, we can put this here or not. It doesn't matter. But the ratio between the areas is 25 over 9. That was very predictable, believe it or not. See, the, the ratio of areas, which is feet squared over feet squared, is related to the scale factor. The scale factor was 5 thirds feet. The area ratio is 25 ninths feet squared, right? So how do you move 5 thirds to 25 ninths? You square it, okay? So if I gave you the scale factor, you should be able to find the area ratio without even doing those calculations. Just simply take the scale factor and square square it to get over to the area ratio. Hey, the same thing is true, but if you were coming back the other way, you'd take the square root of top and bottom. Okay? Cool. Next up is the volume ratio. Whoops, I got to put the area ratio in. All right, volume ratio, go find the volumes or can you predict it? Can you predict what the volume ratio would be without finding the volumes. I'm going to find the volumes to show that it works, but see if you can predict what the volume ratio will be. Put me on pause, come back and check your work. So if you check your work, I'm almost done with mine. I have, uh, whoops, uh, one divided by three. I'm using parentheses all over this thing, right? Make sure that I'm using or putting the stuff into my calculator correctly. And so after doing my calculation, remember, I'm not going to multiply through by pi. I don't want that thing to turn into a nasty decimal. I end up with 2,700 pi feet cubed and on the other side. All right, that ends up being the uh, final answers of those two. Let's go ahead and write the ratios. The pi's, of course, cancel out. Some other reduction here. I end up with 120, 125 over 27, which I believe is very predictable. As we we're looking for the volume, we remember this is in feet cubed, right? My scale factor was five thirds and it was in feet. How do I move from five thirds to um, in feet measurement to feet cubes? I cube it. If I took top and up, I could uh, simply, instead of doing all the math, I could simply take in my scale factor and cubed the top. Took five times five times five and Three divide or three times three times three, and there's my scale for, or my ratio for volume. Just couldn't put that down there for that ratio. So for comparison's sake, these three are the same. So whatever that one is, that one's the same as well, and vice versa. Okay. The area ratio. Whoops. The area ratio is simply the scale factor squared. And the cube ratio is the scale factor cubed. All right, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip my column for words and move on. Now take a look at this uh, 
Texas Instrument screen, you'll see that this is under the math key, okay, you know, where you find fraction. If you look at item number four, there's a three with a little square root sign. That actually is the cube root. That's how you go backwards. What I mean is, let's say I had the volume, which would be in cube feet or feet cubed, and I need to find the scale factor. I'd need to take the cube root to bring it back down to the scale factor because that's in cubes. We need to bring it back down. Okay, so that's something you'll need to figure out. So if you have a TI, it's simply under the math key. If it's uh, if you have another calculator, you just need to know. I would love to teach you about your calculators. I love learning about calculators. I love teaching about calculators. I just don't have the time. And so you live in a fantastic time. That is, you have the internet. So before you come to class next time, you need to make sure you know how to find the cube root key and how to take something and raise it to the third power, uh, the cubing key. You can see number three is that for the, the TI. So we'll need to know that idea on this particular problem. So it says find the scale factor. They give me the volumes for each one of these. Remember, I'm going to put the, um, the image, which is the copy, the prime, on top, and the pre-image on the bottom, write that ratio, and then I'm going to do some work to try to figure out what my scale factor is. Now remember, this is in feet cubed, and I need to turn in the scale factor, which is in feet. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to do a couple of things before I get to using my cube root key. First of all, I'm going to get rid of those pies. The second thing is I'm going to reduce my fraction if it's possible. And it is. And so finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cube root of the top and the bottom. And if I used my calculator rate, I got to be six-fifths. Coming in next class and saying I couldn't figure this out leaves you in the dark. I will not have time. You can come in after school, but don't wait till next class to figure out how to use your cube root key. That right there is uh, the exchange from feet cubed down to feet. Now that it's down to feet, this is what I know about this number. This is my scale factor. My length, uh, my length ratio between the sides. This is my perimeter ratio. All those things. Okay, if I know that ratio, then I can use it to write proportions. A fraction equals a fraction, and find solving uh, stuff. So if I want, if I for some reason knew that this side had a radius of 10, I could use this um, scale factor to find out what that one is. I would just simply say x is to 10. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 is to x, at 6 is to 5, okay? Now, we're going to practice that in class, so if you didn't follow what I just said, no worries. Make sure you understand what I've done so far with the volumes and taking cube roots. All right, we're going to do another one. Keep in mind what I did. I wrote the ratio. I simplified the fractions. Then I took the cube roots to come up with the scale factor. All right, so here's two cylinders, and uh, they're giving me the surface area. According to the right in there, find the ratio of the volume. So what the philosophy of doing a problem like this is, it's a couple of steps. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm given the surface area. I'm going to move down into the scale ratio, and then I'll take the scale ratio and create the volume. Okay, that's the, the kind of path that you'd want to use on a problem like this. So you put me on pause in just a second and see if you can do this problem on your own. Keep in mind what I did last time. I first reduced my fraction, canceling out things, and then reduced my fraction before I started taking the cube root. In this case, you're going to first take the square root to get it down to the scale factor. All right, see if you can do it on your own. Oh, and I'm sorry. Um, please note that it says uh, find the ratio of volumes from the smallest to the largest. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to put the smallest on top and the largest on the bottom. All right, put me on pause. Just my ratio for surface area. Now I'm going to convert that from yards squared into yards by taking the square root of top and bottom, but I'm going to reduce that fraction first. And then I take the square root of top and bottom. Square root of 4 is going to be 2. Square root of 25 is 5. That works out nice. And, of course, the square root of yard squares just end up being yards, right? They cancel each other, the, the squaring out. And now I know, because my units, that I'm talking now about a scale factor. Uh, not an area ratio, not a volume ratio, but a scale factor or perimeter ratio, all those different things, okay? So I'm going to now take that and find the volume. And since the volume is going to be yards cubed, how am I going to move from yards to yards cubed? I'm just going to cube everything. So I'm just going to take 2 and raise it to the third power and 5 to the third power. And so I end up with a ratio of 8 
over 125. And there's my volume. Pretty simple stuff. Take a look at this bonus problem I have for five points. You can bring it in, separate piece of paper, put your name on it, all that stuff. It's due at the beginning class. You give this to me right away. Even if I say give it to me later, you insist that you hand it to me at the beginning of class. Do this on another piece of paper. Make a little drawing of a building with a with a milk cart, a milk bottle like that on top. Uh, follow through the instructions here. Make sure you show your work. Give me sentences. If I can't understand it, if I happen to look around, I'm not going to give you the credit. I'm sorry. I'm looking for quality work here. I'm looking for somebody who's going to take the time to figure this thing out. All right, so there you have it. Um, go ahead and answer the question however it's asked and bring it to me at the beginning of next class. All right, fantastic. There you have it. You, here's your try it problems. The first couple of set are based on this video. The last two, two and three, are review problems from Trig. All right. Have a fantastic day.